Given a Fourier series for a function f of t, it is sometimes possible to make specific choices for the value of t and obtain useful results that have come to be known by some as bonus results. A bonus result in this context consists of a value for an infinite series that now no longer contains signs or causes, but does contain functions of the label n that appeared in the original Fourier series. It's a bit hard to visualize, but it's very easy once you start to do it. So let's get on with an example. I'm going to start with the function f of t equals t squared, defined between negative 1 and 1, and then extended periodically with period 2. The formula for that function looks like this. It's also not hard to draw the graph of this function, so let's do it. I hope it's obvious, either by looking at the graph or just at the formula t squared, that this is an even function. So its Fourier series will contain only cosines and possibly a constant. Here is the Fourier series for this function. I've made a point of including the 4 over pi squared outside the sum. I've got only things that depend on n inside the sum. Now this Fourier series for this f of t converges, that is to say we can use it for, all values of t. So we're perfectly entitled to choose some specific values if we wish. Not any random choice of t will give nice results, but there are some values that do. One of them is when t equals 1. When t equals 1, the function has the value on the left, f of 1, is just 1 squared, which is 1. You can see that from the graph, or if you wish, you can wind back and look at the formula for the function. But with t equals 1, the left-hand side will have the value 1. We now need to substitute t equals 1 on the right-hand side in the series. The only place where that's going to have any effect is in the cosine. Instead of cos n pi t, we will get just cos n pi instead. There, I've got myself an equation with a sum in it. I'm now going to do algebraic manipulations on that equation to isolate the sum on one side. I'm going to start in the first step by doing two things. I'm going to take the one-third over to the left. It will be subtracted, and so that will make one minus a third is two-thirds. At the same time, I'm going to recognize that cos of n pi is just the same as negative one to the power n. We've now got ourselves in the sum, negative 1 to the n, all squared. But negative 1 to the n, for whole numbers n, is only always either minus 1 or plus 1. And so when we square it, we will always get plus 1. So that sum can be simplified further. In fact, it simplifies to just the sum of the reciprocals of the squares of the whole numbers. The last step is to multiply both sides by pi squared over 4, and then we have a value for that sum. I'll leave you to do the algebra and check that the answer is pi squared over 6. I'm going to call that result number 1, because it's not the only result we can get from this Fourier series. Let's go back and look at the series again. We can choose any value of t we like. Not all of them will give nice results for the cos, but there's one very simple one we could use, and that's t equals 0. If we choose t equals 0, the left-hand side will now be f of 0. f of 0 is just 0, which you can see from the graph or the formula. On the right-hand side, we will get cos of 0, but cos of 0 is just 1. So that gives us a new formula with a new kind of sum. Let's write all that out. Remember, f of 0 on the left, so 0, and this sum with the 4 over pi squared, but now the cos no longer there, but just replaced with 1. So there's the left-hand side, and the right-hand side. You can see the right-hand side is almost the same as it was before. The difference now is that we've only got one power of negative 1 to the n, instead of having it square. That will result in a different kind of sum. Let's do the algebra as we did before. Subtract a third from both sides, 
and then multiply by pi squared over 4. There's the first step, and there's the second. Let's see what that series on the left-hand side looks like. Let's write down the first few terms. n equals 1 to 4, say. It starts with negative 1, doesn't it? It's actually a bit more convenient to multiply the whole thing through by negative 1. That'll make something positive on the right-hand side as well. So I'll do that. That's my second useful result, so I'm going to call it number 2. Well, we're not doing badly, but I haven't quite finished yet even. I'm now going to, to write both results down next to each other. There they are together. Can you see that we might find something interesting and new if we add and then alternatively subtract these results? Let's start by adding number 1 to number 2. You can see that the quarter and the sixteenth and so on cancel, while the 1 and the ninth and the term that I haven't written, the 25ths, etc., add up. In fact, we just get the squares of the odd numbers underneath. 1 squared, 3 squared, 5 squared, and so on. We could take out a factor of 2 as well. And we can do the addition on the right-hand side. A sixth plus a twelfth is a quarter, so we get pi squared over 4. Now if we divide both sides by 2, then we have a formula for the sum of all the squares of the odd powers in reciprocals. I'll call that one number 3. We could write it with summation notation symbols if we wanted. We just have to make sure that the denominators are the squares of odd numbers. We can do that as follows. Well, if we can get a new result like that by adding, perhaps we can get another one by subtraction. Unfortunately, though, it turns out not to work that way. Let's see what happens. I'll do number 1, subtract number 2. I'm going to have to scroll up, so let me just talk through it first before I write it out. Can you see that the 1 minus 1 will disappear? The 9th minus the 9th will disappear? In fact, all those with powers of odd numbers, 3 squared, 5 squared, and so on, will disappear. What's left will be the quarter, subtract, negative a quarter. That's a quarter plus a quarter, so it's two quarters. Similarly, we'll get two sixteenths, and so on. So let's write all that out. On the right-hand side, we'll have pi squared over 6 minus pi squared over 12. Now what I need to do is to pull out a factor of quarter in that left-hand bracket. Then, if I multiply both sides by 2, the factor at the front on the left will disappear, and on the right I'll have pi squared over 6, and in fact, all I've got is just result number 1 again. It's nothing new. I think that's enough for this presentation. You might like to experiment and see if you can find any other useful values of t that allow simplification on the right-hand side. In my second presentation on this topic, I will derive a series that involves fourth powers of whole numbers in denominator.